Hey, aloha and welcome back to Stan the Energy Man here, coming to you live and direct from Kailua, Hawaii, home of President Barack Obama's Christmas vacations. We'll, we'll be famous for that for centuries. Anyway, uh, when I first started getting into hydrogen and I was trying to find kind of like the center of the hydrogen universe, all arrows kept pointing back to the state of Ohio for some strange reason. Their universities all do hydrogen stuff. Um, Air Force Research Lab is there and they were doing hydrogen stuff. And so I, I ended up there uh, with the Air Force looking at some of their projects and talking to them about our projects doing hydrogen here in Hawaii. And I, I met a young man uh, named Chris McWinney, who uh, was an ambitious young entrepreneur with a, a strong drive to make hydrogen um, the thing to get uh, on the grid and in transportation especially on the transportation side. So he, he talked to me about his company and I've watched his company grow from uh, basically almost in his garage up into uh, a pretty big operation with big contracts with the military and all kinds of folks now. So I've got uh, Chris McWinney for a guest today and uh, welcome, Chris. It's been a while since you've been on my show, but uh, a lot's been going on. So we kind of hope we can... Uh, can have this date. I called it a hydrogen date, you know, date 10, date 10, Ohio. Anyway, little <laughs> play on words, full pun intended, but um, thanks for joining us today. And I can see it's, it's almost sunset there in Ohio, still uh, not quite dinner time here in Hawaii, but uh, um, still got some daylight over there. So welcome to the show. And um, yeah, could you give us a, a little bit about what's been going on in your world lately? Yeah, well, thanks, Stan. Um, appreciate it. And uh, as far as uh, getting dressed up for the date in Ohio, it's, you know, since this crazy thing's been going on, all the hairdressers are shut down. I, I was ready to do my hair right when they shut down. So now I'm officially two and a half months behind. So, <laughs> hey, don't complain. At least you have hair. I know over here. <laughs> but uh, so, yeah, we're. Um, We've been having some really good things happen lately for us during this period. Uh, we uh, we shut down for uh, four weeks and went home and retreated to our uh, Zoom uh, meetings. And we had uh, eight people that were on every day for four weeks. And we went through all of our manuals and got those up to speed. And we really made good use of the time and really helped advance our technicians trainings and go through uh, service procedures and safety procedures and all those kinds of things. So we've been really busy over the last four or five weeks and um, we've got uh, two new units that we're building in the shop right now for uh, different um, customers and we're really excited about the future. Um, hydrogen, the amount of news and, and positive press that's on hydrogen just keeps uh, expanding uh, every day. Um, I've got my phone, Google knows I like hydrogen and they send me, there's two, three new stories every day that are positive about hydrogen somewhere in the world. Somebody's doing something big and new and exciting. So um, it's, it's a really good time to uh, be in the hydrogen business. And um, we're, we're, our pipeline is up over $239 million right now. Of on 14 different uh, deals that we're working on simultaneously. And that's all happened just within the last six months. So that gives you an indication of how uh, hydrogen is really taken off. Well, we've, uh, we've been watching you from afar and uh, it's been looking good from here. So uh, can you give us a little bit of an update of uh, what's been going on in the, um, in the area of uh, certification and um, standards? Yeah, uh, the standards meetings all continue to meet. Um, basically, there are uh, four main body standards in the world. There's the ISO, which is the International Standards Organization, and it uh, meets in Europe a lot of the times. Um, and then there's the SAE Committee, Society of Automotive Engineers. It's, it, it is the um, organization that deals with the fueling protocols for the cars and the trucks and the light duty equipment and uh, motorcycles, all kinds of things that are coming down the pike. 
um, and they're continuing to meet on a regular basis. And um, then there's the uh, CSA group, and um, they develop standards to test stations and to certify uh, equipment, hydrogen equipment, electrolyzers, fueling stations, that kind of thing. Um, and they're continuing to meet on a regular basis. And then there's NFPA, National for Fire Protection Agency, um, Code 2, and it's uh, all coming out with new, all of them are coming out with new releases, 2020 versions of each document. And so um, it's, a, it's a pretty uh, small community as far as uh, numbers of companies and people that participate in each one of those groups. Um, but uh, they typically meet at least twice a year face to face and uh, depending on what documents we're trying to get put together, um, they uh, maybe meet every two weeks or once a month on a conference call um, and continue to progress the codes and standards to make hydrogen as safe as possible for everybody in the world. So, um, Well, we, we really appreciate all the efforts you put into uh, participating in those meetings. Um, it really impacts a lot of us. and. Uh, it's going to have a long, long-term impact on us. And I think one of the most exciting things about you being part of it was when you got your um, attestation your, your, on your equipment, um, that concept of having an appliance instead of having to get building permits and stuff here. A lot of your equipment can actually be like a refrigerator. You just take it and plug it and play it. And that's, that's going to make a huge difference in the market all, all along from, from here forward, I'm sure. Yeah, that was just theory in the beginning that we thought, well, this would be a good idea if we can do this. And uh, But we really had to dig into NFPA 2 and um, other standards to find out how do you build a piece of equipment that can basically derate it from being a class one division two or a class one division one from an explosive rating and make it become declassified or as the rating is called non-classified and uh, we were able to successfully do that. I mean, we had to go under rigorous testing. Um, you know, it took three years um, just to get the document pre prepared and all the equipment prepared. Um, and then um, go back and forth with the, um, uh, with CSA's uh, technical uh, advisors and legal counsel and all that kind of stuff. And then you had to, um, uh, ha we, they were actually physically in our shop testing the equipment for 11 days. They had five different people with five different disciplines um, from people that uh, determine setback limits and um, those kind of things to people. And we had to do testing. Um, I mean, we have a stack that does 150 PSI, but we had to make it do 260 PSI and not have any leaks and maintain that without rupturing it with, for uh, 30 minutes um, uh, just to prove that it would do what it's supposed to do. and um, but, you know, it was a great education. Uh, they were really helpful. Um, you know, it, and, and then after that, it's not over because we have now went through six different um, no notice audits. They actually come to your shop unannounced and walk through and make sure that you're still doing everything the way that they told you you had to do it to begin with and that you agreed to. Um, and it's pretty uh, intense. And then they sit down and have a talk with you. And if they find any discrepancies, um, if it's not a real big deal, or if they're like, there's been once or twice that a part number got uh, interchanged or, in, you know, flipped around wrong or something like that. And they catch that and write you up for that, but they see you fixed it right away. So they put that in the report. And um, we've, we've not had any uh, bad reports out of six, we passed every one of them. So, uh, but that keeps you on your toes. And I mean, you, you know, when you do these, you have to, every time we produce a product, we have to put it through a, 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 that same rigorous testing that they went through, uh, no destructive tests, but we have to, uh, we have uh, probably somewhere in the vicinity of 12 to 15 um, things like um, multimeters and uh, torque wrenches and um, uh, high oxygen sensors and um, uh, uh, dew point monitors 
that have to be recalibrated annually. And we actually have to keep a sheet that those have all been calibrated. So when we do testing with them uh, to see that uh, <clears throat> we're doing dielectric testing and, and dielectric withstand testing and, and those kind of things that the equipment is all operating and functioning in a normal ranges. Yeah. Hey, we. Uh, I think we got your slides ready. If you wanna, if you wanna call some of them up uh, and talk to them, we can do that. Yeah, we can go through that and uh, show a little bit about what's going on in the industry. Okay. I don't know if Eric can throw. Yeah, there's the first one up there now. Okay, so um, uh, we're we feel like we're a leading infrastructure manufacturer distributor that develops cutting edge scalable hydrogen fueling and electrolyzers and we use our patented water al alkaline electrolysis process for that and that's been a real secret to our success is that alkaline electrolysis um, process um, so um, go ahead to the next slide there um, the market is really picking up significantly um, this is from McKinsey um, and they report a uh, that uh, the hydrogen fueling market just by itself, by 2026, will be an $11 billion market. And by 2050, it'll be a $2.5 trillion market. So Millennium Rain Energy is trying to get an 18% share of that market. Um, go ahead. Um, where is the, why, why is the market gonna be so big? Well, based on their research, they feel like there'll be over 400 million cars running on hydrogen, 20 million trucks, 5 million buses, and the hydrogen industry will supply 30 million jobs. And uh, MRE's um, plan for hydrogen infrastructure um, will potentially negate 17 billion metric tons of carbon dioxide, and that's by putting out 30,000 stations in the United States in the next 20 years. Um, that was done by a company called Baumus, um, impact investing and they did the research and just and, and did the numbers and that's where they came up with that go to the next slide please and so what does 17 billion metric tons look like well that would be the equivalent of 170,000 bush aircraft carriers if you could imagine that all piled up that would be like a mountain range and um, that gives you an idea how much co2 that that gets out of the air go ahead next so our plan is to build 500 fueling stations over the next five years and then 5,000 more in the following five years after that, ultimately achieving 30,000 um, over the USA within 20 years. And that would generate about $30 billion in sales of equipment and about $6.1 billion in annual recurring revenue on the hydrogen gas sales if MRE owns the stations. Um, the, this represents about only six, uh, one of six markets that would need the products that MRE has um, revealed in our business plan. And the plan shows a projected annual average return on investment over a 10 year period of time of 15.6%. So um, pretty good investment um, in, 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 into to hydrogen. Um, go ahead with the next slide. So you can see that activity is heating up um, there's uh, Fast Company had a deal showing a guy that was running an airplane, that plane, that very plane in that picture on hydrogen. BMW's coming online with a nice sports car. Um, there's a company actually building a, a, a flying car that would run on hydrogen. It's like a giant size uh, drone. Um, there's trucks and buses. Um, Nikola just went public for $3.1 billion. Um, there's lots of movement. Companies are buying companies and merging GEs, looking at uh, making their uh, turbines run on hydrogen. Um, they actually did a, a two uh, uh, part uh, rollout of uh, how they're gonna do that and how excited they are about it. So um, this is opening up lots of markets for MRE and we stand ready um, to deploy hydrogen fueling technologies to capture these opportunities. Go ahead. And Go next. Yep. Hey, Chris, we're going to take a quick break here. And when we come back, uh, we'll, we'll get to your slides again. And I'd actually like to spend a few minutes talking about Nikola Motors uh, yeah. and some of the stuff they've, they've had going on recently. 
um, because everybody's been watching them. And I say everybody, I mean, uh, they've been on national news. They've got, um, they've got the, you know, all the, the business uh, analysts and stuff watching them because they're, they're about ready to make a big splash on the scene. And, um, and in the hydrogen world, they're probably the biggest splash around. But we're going to take a quick 60-second break, and we'll be back with Chris McWinney. Aloha. My name is Mark Shklov. I am the host of Think Tech Hawaii's Law Across the Sea program. Being a lawyer has many aspects, and I try to cover them every time I do a program of Law Across the Sea. Not everything has to do with law or being a lawyer per se. Some of it has to do with the people you meet, the things you see, the places you visit. And that's what I try to combine in Think Tech Hawaii's Law Across the Sea. Thank you for watching. Aloha. Hey, welcome back to Stan Energy Man. Stan Osterman here talking to Chris McWinney all the way from Dayton, Ohio, the home of all things hydrogen, as far as I can tell. It seems like the center of the universe in the USA, anyway, for hydrogen. So, Chris, uh, we, we were looking through your slides. Uh, why don't we pick up with those again and, and you can keep pressing? Okay. So, uh, we have a. a really nice IP portfolio, I think, um, over the years. We've developed nine patents. We have four in the United States, three in Europe, European Union, and two in Canada. We have three nice trademarks. Um, and um, we actually trademarked H2 with the leaf on it. So it's kind of cool. And um, we have two certificates of attestation, and these are really critical. These are the things that give us the ability to um, say to a regulator or what they call an authority having jurisdiction in a in a um, area um, in a county um, that they can pick up this piece of paper right here and see that a third party internationally recognized testing laboratory has basically stated that this product meets all the necessary codes and standards that it needs to meet and um, they really like having a piece of paper like that because otherwise like in the United States alone, um, there's uh, like 3,800 counties. And imagine having to, every time you go into a new county, educate the new authority having jurisdiction, which doesn't know anything about hydrogen. I, I actually don't have to imagine it, Chris. That's, that's my life. It yeah. seems like uh, we only have uh, like four counties here and, and every one of them is a different animal. And yeah. it usually takes us three years to get a hydrogen project going because the fire chief doesn't know anything or the building inspector doesn't know anything or the, the county plan guys don't know anything. So that, that's, that attestation is really critical. And anything they do know is bad. Yeah, most of it's out of the box bad. <laughs> so anyways, um, go ahead with the next uh, slide. Uh, so the markets for our products that we're focusing on right now are fueling light duty vehicles like cars. There's over 11,000 hydrogen fuel cell cars out in the fuel cell forklift market. Um, the slide's actually fairly new, but it's actually now 32,000 forklifts in use in uh, distribution centers. Um, and then trucking um, is coming on strong. And all of those are going to need fuel, and we build fueling stations that will do that. Go ahead to the next slide. And so this is a little pathway to consumer adoption that separates Millennium Rain Energy's approach from the rest of the industry. We believe that um, you should start out small with a small station that matches the demand and dynamically matching supply and demand is a really important feature of what we do. And so we intentionally built our products to scale from one level to the next level to the next level. 
So if you'd start out down there at the bottom with our Model 200 or SHFA, that stands for Scalable Hydrogen Fueling Appliance, and, um, and you were to get the, um, um, the electricity to supply that at 10 cents a kilowatt hour, it's going to be $5.71 a gallon of gas equivalent to whoever's buying it. The objective is to get that down below $4. And if you can see by the third step when we're at the Mega 4 TA70, that means it's uh, got four of our mega stacks. It produces 64 kilograms a day and it puts out hydrogen at, seven, at 70 MPA or 10,000 PSI. You're now at $3.71 per GGE, and that is cheaper, except for this recent time that we fell into with um, this virus. It's got the oil down and depressed prices, which a lot of people are thankful for, but it'll come back and go up high again. And um, so before this happened, that was cheaper than gas was in California and Hawaii and um, Europe. So... Um, We've, what we've done is we've proven that you can actually make hydrogen fueling infrastructure and so that the hydrogen is cheaper than gasoline. And that's a key component because rather than just pushing the environmental benefits, which are big and huge and obvious, um, you can touch people's pocketbook and give them yeah. another reason to make a change. So but that, that, that's actually is so a big part of your operation. You're doing what they call green hydrogen, which is electrolyzed hydrogen. Whereas a lot of the hydrogen in California that's filling the market now is uh, methane reform, steam methane reformed uh, hydrogen to get it right. cheap enough to buy, but you don't have to do that. You can stay clean from the get-go using your equipment, correct? That's right, that's right. So go ahead to the next slide then. Um, so the next level that we wanna go to then is our megawatt scale and this, shows two platforms. One has 10, uh, 10 inside a container, 10 of our stacks, and that does 160 kilograms a day. And then if you take that, you could organize it in another way, like the top right picture, and that would be a megawatt of uh, hydrogen production. It would produce uh, 480 kilograms a day. And we're running about 1.35 million for a megawatt uh, scale electrolyzer and the platform that's in the other uh, container that would do 160 kilograms a day is about 400, 450,000. Um, so um, this is gonna be important for utility scale, hydrogen production for storage of wind and solar on a utility scale, um, which is the numbers are working out to be like bat to store it in batteries is $385 a kilowatt and to store it in hydrogen with our systems and our super tanker system can be as low as $95 a kilowatt. So um, we think this is another really big up and coming market and uh, there's a lot of traction being made in that. Go ahead to the last slide. Yeah, I think that um, the, the synergy between transportation and the grid, um, when we start getting a lot of that what would otherwise be curtailed solar or wind power um, turned into hydrogen using your equipment, uh, that's going to that's going to actually make it available for the transportation sector, and they can they can split the um, a lot of the uh, capital cost of producing the hydrogen will actually be, start to be split between transportation and grid, and I think that'll just accelerate everything. Yeah, it's going to make the hydrogen a lot less expensive as well. So uh, the last slide then is just basically showing that uh, we're doing business with the Army, the Navy, the Air Force. We've had uh, NASA has used our hydrogen. We delivered hydrogen to 50, 50, Super Bowl 50. Uh, Hawaii Electric Light has used our hydrogen. And um, the Navy Research Labs used our hydrogen. We fueled the Toyota product, Honda, General Motors, fuel cell cars, drones, buses, and forklifts, and light carts. So, um, you know, and we've, we've just installed them in Dubai, California, Hickam Air Force Base in Hawaii, and um, in Texas. So, we're getting around. So um, that's pretty much it for the slides. Well, we can add to your list there, the, the very first station off base in Hawaii that wasn't associated with a military base was one of your units on Cook Street at HCAT. And we had it running for two years um, and it was an appliance. So all we did was hook up a 220 50 amp line and some water. And we we're off and running and making hydrogen right at our shop 
<clears throat> we use that for uh, maintaining uh, some of our vehicles we're doing for the Air Force and the light carts and things that we use to demonstrate to the, the folks at the county level here in Honolulu. Yeah. So uh, you're, I think we we're serial number two and three on our two units we had out there. Sure, that's right. So uh, we're, we're probably one of your early adopters and it's been a great run. You, you've taken your company a long ways since those early days. Yeah, yeah. Well, you said uh, you'd like to maybe talk a little bit more about the trucking thing and what's going on there. And uh, yeah, Nicola has uh, really uh, got a great uh, business approach. Um, they believe that rather than being a trucking company, they're going to be an energy company. And what I think is brilliant about the way they're going about doing things is, um, you know, they, they say if somebody owns a truck company like Peterbilt, and um, they sell a truck. They might sell a truck for one hundred fifty, two hundred thousand dollars, and make twenty or thirty thousand dollars one time. But um, then that truck goes on the road, and the oil company makes a million dollars on that truck over its lifetime, filling it with fuel. So what they're seeing is is that it's going to be really important to own hydrogen fueling infrastructure network, and the truck is just a way to sell fuel to. And so that is uh, just really a, a, a great um, uh, uh, way to build the company. And it, it's the same way we want to build our company, but uh, we don't have a truck, we have the fuel. So we, we're our, we are the fuel company. And so um, uh, we think that we have a broad range of products to hit that market and be successful in it. Did you have a financial planning background before you uh, started doing your own company? Yep, um, 23 years. I was a financial advisor. I was like number 30 in Smith Barney and mutual funds. And, and I had 2,800 clients under uh, management, um, about uh, $28 million of assets under management and $500 million worth of loans outstanding, um, mortgages and um, about a billion dollars worth of face amount in life insurance and insurance. And so I, I, I learned a lot about managing money. And then for that, I was a farmer and a mechanic. Um, so I never went to college, but I think God prepared me very well for uh, what we're doing now. I, I, I pull on all those disciplines all the time. Yeah. No, you're definitely doing a great job. And I can tell that uh, you're applying all your financial wisdom uh, to your own company. And uh, I think you're spot on with Nikola Motors because you're right. They're they're revolutionary in what they're doing, and they've broken the code. The money's in the energy, not in the hardware. And right. uh, and he's they've got it they've got it all lined up. But well, I tell you what, Chris, we're bumped up against the end of our time slot here, and and I want to thank you for staying up a little late tonight. And uh, you know, I don't see your wife's tapestry hanging in the background, so you must be in a different <laughs> spot. But uh, Usually she contributes to our uh, our background for you, but yeah. um, give her give her a big hug for us and uh, stay safe and stay healthy. And we'll talk to you in another couple of weeks. Maybe if you can get your lawyers off your case, we can actually take a tour of your shop or something. How about, how about yeah. that? <laughs> we'll try to do that next time. Okay. Well, Chris, <laughs> thank, thanks for joining me. And I hope to see you out here in Hawaii as soon as uh, things are opened up again and we can have, uh, have you out fishing or something. I can't wait, Stan. Miss you okay. guys. Thanks. All right. Well, until uh, next week, that's Stan, uh, Energy Man, Stan Awesome here, signing off from Think Tech Hawaii. And uh, keep tuned. We've got a lot of good shows on Think Tech and uh, a lot more programming to come. Aloha.